Hi, it's Leaf. So, because it's a bit of a quiet time for Sandrock, and apart from the announcement regarding changes in the multiplayer mode, not much is happening until July, let's talk about Project Me a little more. The game itself has just been officially announced, so it's going to take a while before it gets released, but we do already know some of the characters that are going to appear in it. We know Avery is going to be there, and Logan, even though it's not entirely clear to me how this is supposed to work and what it means for the timeline. But maybe let's not focus on the familiar faces, instead let's take a look at the confirmed NPCs that show up only in Project Me, well, at least for now. So far, we've been officially introduced to eight, well, nine characters, and they all seem pretty colorful. Their concept art with short descriptions can be found on Project Me's official Discord channel and Facebook page, but let's inspect them together. So, these two are Tess and Pep. Tess runs the local restaurant, and Pep is her 10-year-old son. Both look like sunny and very warm people. Apparently, Tess's cooking is what dreams are made of, but no matter how tasty her food is, Pep is still a picky eater, which I imagine can be a bit frustrating for her. Pep is also currently the only kid in town that we know of. I honestly hope that in the future he will get at least one friend his age. The next character is Rudy. Rudy is described as a middle-aged retired businessman who moved to Settlement 7 to enjoy a simpler and less hectic life now that he doesn't have to worry about his career anymore. The thing is, after years spent in a big city, living in a small remote town is much more difficult than he expected. I'm not sure what he was thinking, to be honest. If he wanted an easy, pleasant retirement, Porsche would probably be a better choice, but maybe he actually wanted to make a difference, and settlement number 7 seemed like a great opportunity. I guess we'll find out in the game. Either way, Rudy has to now live with the consequences of his decision in a place where nothing comes easy, no matter how much money you have. And now, Grandma Lily. She is really something. She runs the tavern, but she is not your typical sweet little granny. Oh no. She's tough as nails, eats bandits for breakfast, and treats dangerous trips into the desert as casual morning strolls. Her description also informs us that she's going to be knocking us, the players, into shape. So you don't want to get on her bad side. Now let's talk about this charming lady. This is Tia. Tia owns a local grocery store that is, and I quote, more like a curiosity shop. I'm not sure what that means exactly, but if I go there to buy some coffee and I return with a strange creature I'm not supposed to feed after midnight, uh, Settlement 7 might be facing a tiny little problem. And I sure hope that's not the case because Tia dreams of turning this one shop into an entire chain. Anyway, is she single? Next on our list is a gentleman by the name of Erasmo. He's a ranch hand and apparently a very good one. He is also known for not mincing words and because of that it's supposedly easier for him to get along with animals than humans. But to be honest, when I look at him I see a seasoned ladies man, or at least someone who tries to appear as one. He is handsome and he is clearly aware of this fact. His clothes might be patched, but you don't usually need a waistcoat while doing physical labor, unless you really want to look good. And it seems that he really wants to look good, and he does. Right, so after Erasmo was announced, the devs presented us with two silhouettes and asked which of them we'd like to see revealed. Silhouette A won, but it looks like Silhouette B belongs to the lady who actually accompanies Rudy in the trailer. We don't know her name yet, but at least now we know what she looks like. So, the winning silhouette turned out to be Kang, and let me quote his entire description here. A reticent but adamant young man, Kang makes the decision to give up his studies and join a border settlement after personally experiencing the effects of war. Oh look, another silent type of traumatic experiences. Yep, he obviously reminds me of Fang, even his name is similar. Okay, I actually really like that type, so I'm not gonna complain, but what I like even more is that he is described as adamant, because it is, hopefully, mutually exclusive with adjectives such as inert and helpless. Okay, I am being mean and unfair and Fang is not that bad, but yeah, I am kinda hoping that Kang is going to be a less squishy version of Fang, which would be way better in my eyes, even though 
He is obviously not as beautiful. But I realize I cannot have everything. Okay, so then we were asked to choose between two silhouettes again. This time it was two girls. Option A won yet again, but everybody and their dog already knew that option B must be Freya. We don't know much about her, but she's basically the face of this game. Her character has also been used as an AI chatbot that we can talk to on the game's website and on the official Discord. However, she hallucinates a lot, so don't treat everything she says seriously, even if it's about the game, especially if you ask about other characters. Anyway, because we were already somewhat familiar with Freya, we chose option A. I was especially interested in this option because I recognize her as someone we've already seen in the trailer, but only from behind, and she seemed like my kind of girl. I gotta admit, I've always had a weakness for tough ladies. And so, Panna was introduced. Panna is a monster hunter, and she dreams of becoming a famous monster hunter, but apparently she's just a bit too eager. Maybe that means she's too reckless, maybe too impatient. We don't know the specifics yet, so we have to wait and see. All we know is that she was described as literally too eager, and that eagerness seems to cause problems. In any case, she's a very interesting character who suspiciously reminds me a lot of the Final Fantasy series. I mean, this shot alone is like a shout out to Final Fantasy VII, at least if your brain is conditioned like mine. Actually, if Cloud and Tifa had a daughter and her favorite uncle was red, she would probably grow up to look exactly like Panna. Also, she wears a mask and I have no idea why. Okay, and those are all the characters that have been introduced so far. So, what do you think? In Project Me, relationships with the NPCs are supposedly going to be just as important and detailed as in other My Time games, so... Are you interested in befriending or romancing any of them? Of course, it's way too early and we know far too little about them to have an opinion, like a real opinion, but one thing is certain. Attractive NPCs are definitely becoming a hallmark of this series. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I see you in the next video. Take care.